The Great Turkey Walk by Kathleen Carr, Chapter 15. The Smoky Hill Fork just used itself up and disappeared into a bone-dry channel of gravel. We had to take a chance and follow the rough trail of the Pike's Peak rough trail the Pikes Peak or Bust Gold Rushers had carved into the prairie a couple of years back. It worked out fine when we met up with the big Sandy Creek after about a half day's walk. The land started changing then, from straight out, flat to rolling. And at the end of another day's journey, we had a new view. There they be, Bidwell Peace observed after he set the mules and horses to graze. He was standing by the wagon, sort of resting against it, gazing off to the west, the shining mountains. The Rockies. One by one, Jabeth and me and Lizzie wandered over to stand next to him. Lizzie carefully kept to the far side of Jabeth from me, like she'd been doing since that plow and peat business. They's nothing but a haze of purple, Jabeth opined. How far off you figure we are, Mr. Peace, sir? The drover rubbed his chin. Round about a hundred miles, give or take a few. Won't be long now. Should make Denver inside of the week, all things being equal. Only a week? I stole a glance at Lizzie. It weren't nearly long enough. Even if I knew there wasn't no future for me with her, it was a real comfort just being in the same vicinity. That would sure and certain stop come Denver. A lot of other things would stop too. I studied Mr. Peace next. He'd trot off with his horses and his percentage to start up a new life. My head swung toward Jabeth. My friend would be gone too. Not that we've been quite the same ever since the grasshoppers and the soddy. Always seemed to take Lizzie's side, he did like he was protecting her, too. I looked up at the purple haze of mountains again. These ro those Rockies ran clear across the sky, south to north, far as a body could see. They broke up the ocean of flatness I'd half believe would go on forever. My eyes fell from the distance to my turkeys. They was already tucked up in their nests for the night, their bronze feathers blending into the sunset. They'd been good troopers all along, the best. I think they'd be content to keep walking as far as China if Mr. Peace and Emmett and I was to keep them company. What do you suppose was filling them tiny little birds' brains now? Could they remember their river flight? And the camels? What about the soldiers? What about... I had to grin at the next thought, sure enough. What you smirking at, Simon? Jabeth asked. Who, me? Nothing. Well, nothing much. Just wondering how long a turkey can remember the biggest grasshopper feast in all creation. I cogitated some more. I figure maybe it's a longer than a peacock could. I'm figuring maybe turkeys ain't as stupid as folks back in Union, Missouri thought. Mr. Peace chuckled. Ain't none of us as, as stupid as all that, Simon. Then the sun tucked down behind that purple haze and Jabeth and Mr. Peace started shuffling away from the view. Somehow I ended up tarrying a moment longer, though, and somehow Lizzie Hardwick tarried with me. She played with the long braid all that fine hair was done up in. Just swung it over her shoulder and toyed with it. I'm sorry it's almost over, Simon. I was hoping we'd have time to become friends. But we are friends, Lizzie, I protested. What I mean is, her voice trailed off. I leaned back into the wagon, feeling huge and gawky again, wondering where to set my feet, wondering what to do with my big paws. She didn't seem to notice, just kept staring toward the ridge of mountains, turning from purple to black now. That night, that night you stayed with me in the dugout? I muttered something unrecognizable. My throat was so tight it was all that would come out. You were my savior, Simon, my knight in shining armor. You'd come out of nowhere to slay the dragon of despair. Must have done an awful amount of reading in your time, Lizzie. I finally managed to croak out. In your 16 years, I cleared my throat, to know about such things, to talk about them so pretty. We had books, yes, before I burned them for tender. 16 years worth of books must have made a mighty... Lot of tender. She flashed me an odd lock. I wasn't reading for all of my 16 years, Simon. Still in all, I continued, you must have been reading for a goodly number of those 16 years for to have such beautiful words in your head. Lizzie stomped a foot. What is it about you in 16 years, Simon Green? If you say 16 one more time, I'll, I'll, you can do anything you want, Lizzie. Say anything you want. A 16-year-old young lady has got prerogatives. Fifteen-year-old boy ain't. Lizzie screamed, furious and piercing. I clapped my hands over my ears as she m marched on me. There, does that satisfy you? Or shall I scream again? Jabez scrambled around the corner of the wagon, catching me with ar my arms still raised. What's happening? Anything wrong, Lizzie? You see a big old rattler or something? Lizzie yanked at her braid in frustration. Nothing's wrong. Just go away, Jabez. 
She watched his face fall and relented. Please, Simon and I are only having a private discussion. Jabez slunk off and Lizzie turned on me again. That's what I have to put up with, from all of you, treating me as if I'm some exotic creature on a pedestal. And you, Simon Green, you're the worst one of the lot. I'm 16 years old, and I want to be normal. I want to be treated normally. I want you to treat me normally. I was backing away from her into the prairie as fast as I was able, feeling strange, all hot and cold. It ain't possible. Why ain't it possible, Simon Green, she yelled. Because, because I stumbled on a rock and collapsed into a patch of drought-cracked earth, legs splayed out, flat on my bottom. Understanding the meaning of despair at last, I covered my face. The words still came forth, though. I couldn't stop them. They'd been bottled inside for what seemed an eternity. Because I'm only 15. You're an older woman and couldn't ever have anything to do with me. There, it was finally out. I pulled my hands from my face and looked up to see what effect my confession had made on Lizzie. I had to stare hard through the darkening night sky. I shook my head and stared some more. Looked like she'd been taken right sudden with some sort of stomach ailment. The way she was all bent over, clutching her middle parts. Was it a leftover effect of the egg? Or had she been struck with the cholera? She never did say what her entire family had kicked the bucket over. Cholera? That had to be it. And here she was, the only woman I'd ever love, expiring before my very eyes. Lizzie! I leaped up to grab her, to comfort her, to give her the opportunity to die in the arms of someone who truly cared, someone who would mourn for her for forever, someone who would trek back regular to plant flowers on her grave, even in this wilderness. She was shaking when I touched her, right enough, but it weren't from any cholera. Lizzie Hardwick was convulsed with laughter. Simon Green, she gasped out, tears streaming down her face. Then she let out a belly laugh like no other had ever heard. She must have been holding it in so that it hurt something fierce. Simon Green, you great, hulking, blundering idiot. What, Lizzie? What I do? I'll make it better, I swear to heaven. You think a few months or even a year makes any difference when two people have a feeling for each other? I dropped my hands from her and stepped back as her first batch of words registered. Malign me all you want, Miss Lizzie. Won't be the first time in my life for that to happen. She swiped at her face with the hem of her dress. The tears were still coming. I'm not maligning you. You turkey brain fool. That stopped me in my track. Turkey brain had to be an improvement over pea brained. From where I stood and the experiences I'd been through on this here great turkey walk, I'd have to admit to that point, progress was being made. She swiped at her face again. I'm trying to tell you I like you, Simon, a whole lot. Light began to dawn slowly but surely, even though the sun had only just set. You mean to say it won't matter about you being 16? Lizzie's entire body went into those spasms again, over and over, that word. I soldiered on, and me being 15, I kept on plowing directly ahead, not to mention me being turkey-brained and all. Lizzie was sobbing now. I waited patiently for the sobs to settle. It took a while before she turned to me. You have more natural good sense and goodness than anyone I've ever met before in my entire life. Aside from this age business, do you, do you believe me, Simon? I scratched my head. I guess so, and it's mighty nice of you to put it like that. Come here, Simon, Lizzie ordered. I edged closer. If you promise, solemnly promise, to treat me like a normal girl, you may give me a kiss. I gulped. I promise I surely do, Lizzie. Cross my heart and hope to die. Good, but you can forget about the dying part. She pointed to her cheek. Right here. Well, I aim for where she pointed, but I always was a little clumsy. Was it my fault it was her lips I found instead? Simon! Lizzie? That was Mr. Peace's voice floating over the embrace. Your supper's sitting here waiting on you, and it's turning stone cold. <laughs>